Mike Smith here, NAU repeat championship. I mean, you guys crushed it today. Was that, what are your thoughts of the race? How did it play out? What was the game plan that? You know, um, it's just a. Uh, there's so much talk about this stuff. Talk, 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 talk. And it's like we just stayed away from that talk and we just. I don't know, man. We just. We just did it. It's just, it's just work. It's like it's training. It's just it's, it's real. It's real stuff. The talk isn't real. This is real. You know, and uh, yeah, just give it to those guys. They kept their heads and, and they kept uh, a lot of emotional control. That That's the name of the game, NCAA Cross Country. And I tell that to high school kids, high school coaches, you know, state meets, things like that. Emotional control. And I think that's what did it for us here. It's, it's a... Uh, you know, it's just a lot of uh, discipline of the mind. So those seven thousand foot metrics. That's right, seven thousand feet. I, I mean, I, tell, I said that in that press conference, like, you know, uh, eight or ten miles, five twenty pace. People think like that's not. You know, there's three hundred teams in America doing that, but uh, we we know what the numbers mean, and uh, Eric Hines knows what the numbers mean. Ron Mann knows what the numbers mean. So we we uh, yeah we we don't we don't write blogs about it. We just go we just go to Buffalo Park and get the work in. So. Told them, they said they said you told them one thing, gas, 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 gas. Why? Why was that? What you had to tell them? Why did you tell them? <laughs> yeah. The um, so with with the <clears throat> with the wind, what we thought is the it, you know a typical race that there's some gaps, gaps are easily closed, 10 meters. Well, with wind, what we saw today is the I mean in the first, if you pay attention, first 2k, that group that got away a little bit in wind like this. That's a I mean it takes. That's Tour de France, right? On a breakaway like that, you can't, in cycling, you can't, you can't make that up. And so, uh, if you watch enough cycling, you know that in conditions like this, um, it was gonna be really hard to bridge that gap. <clears throat> when we notice the gap, uh, we smell blood, you have to apply pressure. And so, uh, we, I told them, uh, I, I was joking with them over the days, I said like, uh, hey, whenever you don't know what to do, what's the answer? Gas. Uh, whenever you have a decision to make in the race, what do you do? Gas. What's the race plan? Gas. So it was just what gas means is just applying, applying pressure, applying pressure, applying pressure. So Tyler and Matt, I mean, obviously they've been running great all season. Peter Lamont, eighth. I mean, did you see that coming? How do you explain that? Ooh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> um. Yeah, um, he's, um, yeah, I, uh, most of us will never be the uh, sibling of an Olympian. Uh, you know, we see it a, a massive issue in this sport is expectation and how we manage expectation. Um, high school kids, like, we blow them up with expectation and, uh, you know, you're, the, the, the key to Peter Lemong is he's Lopez Lemong's brother and and we had to undo that and 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 I love Lopez but the first one of the first things I said to Peter when I got when I started working at NAU is I closed the door and I got in his face I said I don't I don't give a damn who your brother is and um, we had to release him of that expectation and as soon as we did that it's a uh, <clears throat> sorry it's, it's just uh, I know what he's done I uh, as soon as we, we released him of that expectation we let him run free um, he came in my office in May and he said, what's the next progression for training? And I told him and uh, he said, I need, I, I want to do more than that. And so I said, all right, look, there's a risk. And the risk is, uh, you know, the risk is you get hurt. He stayed, he stayed there the summer. I mean, he'd run like 70 miles a week <laughs> up until uh, the summer. And he stayed in flag and ran. We will go up to Waterline Road at 9,000 feet and went every, he went every weekend it ran 100 to 110 miles a week for 14 weeks and uh you know i mean he came in and advocated for himself he said give me give me this training give me the work and um so you know you can do all that and, and sometimes it doesn't work out and uh, that's the risk and and he uh he did it and it worked out and, and that's uh when i see a performance like that today it's not about our it's not about winning i would uh, it's just knowing that uh he i, I know where he's come from and um I'm, I'm very, very proud of him. Yeah. Now, you, you were on the staff last year when they won, but you're the head coach now. Yep. This year, first one as a head coach. What does that mean? Yeah, I, 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 want, I want you all to make sure whatever you edit, you ever put this out, you got to know uh, that this is, uh, yeah, I'm the head coach, but this is as much uh, Eric Hines, 
national championship. And uh, I, I could not do what I do this year without his support. But also, you know, I'm, hey, I'm, I'm a year in, and uh, I got handed a, a, a really wonderful team culture. I got handed wonderful athletes. I got handed uh, just a really fantastic situation. I, I gotta, I got the pressure. I gotta make it work. But um, Coach Hines taught me a lot. And I, I'm not sure I could have coached. I would coach the same way I did this fall without being able to work with him coaching last fall. And uh, so I just, uh, 10 years from now, maybe that one will be mine. This one we got to share, though. Yeah, that was a very unique coaching transition. You don't see very often where you, yeah. you get to kind of observe yeah. for a season. Yeah. Um, you know, when the team became yours officially and you became the head coach, how, you know, conversations like you just said with, with uh, you know, Peter, uh, how did you really, like, make it your own? After yeah. Um, a bit, I think just a big thing is just uh, like not overcorrecting or overemphasizing, and just uh, you know they're they're good. We you know we just have to figure out you know a few places we can maybe be better. And and uh, if you change nothing, it's still a different human. It's still a different like I got different quirks. I got different drills. I got different you know different things. And so that enough is a change. You don't need to make these massive changes. So I, I think just recognizing what works and and also giving make sure there's part of the program where they. Uh, we account for the fact that they've got a different person in front of them, and there's, that's, a, that's a, a big thing to adapt to. But, I mean, I give it to those guys. They were really open. And I think us working together just made that transition a lot easier. <laughs> you just got a little emotional about Peter. Was <laughs> yeah. that just Peter or oh. the team or everything? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I... I, I uh, <clears throat> yeah, it's... It's... Uh, it's... it's uh, there's this, I just, I just told my staff this morning at coffee, it says this Obama quote about uh, he lost his con uh, congressional race and he's talking about how he's all bummed out and he said, uh, if, you, if you make it about you, you're going to get frustrated, you're going to get stuck, and if you make it about the work, uh, then, you, um, then, then, then you'll always stay up. And uh, I think uh, in coaching, that's just really, really important. You, you coach, you know, it's, it's like if you make it about the, the work, which is... Uh, you know, uh, how many of these guys, you know, some of these guys will run professionally, uh, but really this is about how we, we move them in their lives. And so what I just, the story I just told you about, about Peter Lemong is, uh, to me, is about, uh, when, I, when I say that, it's not about like, oh, now he's going to get some contract. It's about who he's going to be when the family and a career and, and later on in life. So that's, and no one came from, no one like th that, that gap. So, and that's just, and he's an example. There's a lot of guys like that. I, I know you want, you want Tyler to roll the NAU, but. Yeah, he's a, a 928 high school guy. He's yeah. still 30, so that doesn't usually happen. I asked him, he wasn't just like, well, I was sort of born as a system. Is that, how specifically has he improved? What about his running? Has he made him to this level? Yeah, if you, if you were, I was just at this uh, altitude symposium in Colorado Springs. He talked to Robert Chapman. He talks about different responders to altitude. I think, we, I think he's a huge responder to the altitude. I think, I mean, he, you know, some people, that, you know, they're not necessarily hugely aerobically trained. Um, he definitely had an upside as far as like what he had done for training in high school, but his stimulus to altitude, uh, I just think is is uh, above average. And uh, we keep his volume high. All these guys, their volume, they ran high volume last week. We keep the volume high, um, and I think he just was. You know, in recruiting, it's like, man, I, I don't know. You you, you want to get these diamonds in the rough like that, and you can. It's a real decision to make, like the Abby Diagostinos, the Tyler Days. Uh, you know, you want those, but a, a lot of those, it's a. Uh, it's, it's, it doesn't necessarily always work. Um, he's one that wanted to come to NAU. He's from Arizona. He wanted to come. <laughs> he's, a, he's a big part of our culture, but I think his, um, the way he trains is just a really good match for 7,000 feet. How high was that mileage last week? Yeah, I mean, uh, we, uh, yeah, those guys were in the, geez, I don't know, maybe, you know, upper 80s, low 90s last week still. So we don't, that's damn path. Path, uh, you know, he taught me how to, uh, had a taper, so yeah. Flagstaff's the best place to change the country, at least I think so. Yeah. You think now? I mean, you guys won last year. You dominated this year. Yeah. Just, it's just funny. We were, we're, we were hanging with, with Ron Mann, and uh, actually, when like when you guys, you and your brother were there and stuff, like it was before the social media explosion, and I think Instagram and stuff. Everyone sees the Red Rock Sedona pictures, and they, everyone wants uh wants to come to Flagstaff. There's enough places we know to go and get away from crowds and things like that, but yeah, it's, it's a it's it's a it's it's a busy place, uh, especially in the springtime. We uh we gotta call a track. We gotta say like lane one. Our sprint coach is over there. You do a, a Mo Farah uh, almost hit him uh, during our sprint practice. You know th those are normal problems that you have usually in a college practice. It's a track. Uh, we're, we got no practice. Four gold medals. Uh, 
but um, yeah, it's it's a it's a it's a busy place, but uh, but some of that's really good for us too because we these guys have access and influence to um, a lot of great personalities in town and people that have had hard roads. You know, when you think your your injury is the end of the world, and then like we can tell you a story of a guy that you saw in the coffee shop this morning that like had surgery and things like that. So all that stuff is uh, is really good for our athletes. What what Dan asked you about? Tapering, yeah, yeah, it's a, what we are, we, us, dist us distance coaches, like, we, um, we pull back way too much, and we leave them very lethargic, and, uh, you, uh, oh, hey, Paul, we'll get out of here, thank you so much, thank you, uh, yeah, Path, uh, Path's awesome, he's just a secret weapon, uh, Path, I'm sorry, I think, I said it about my coach, that guy's a genius. Dude, he's, he's he's like, what are you talking about when you're